accent like you have. Yeah, I'm completely the opposite. Yeah. I feel like I butcher people's names uh, when I read them out sometimes. I wish uh, I wish I had the knowledge. Oh no, the knowledge. I've just got the, the, the blood. <laughs> live so we are live uh welcome everybody uh i'm here with mr pete hughes i'm going to be going over the tim holtz chapter two range so that's really really exciting you might have already seen um tim's video so he will have gone over everything in detail but i'm here to uh just go over it again for anyone who may not have seen that video and just talk about what we love about the dies um uh, pete is going to be on hand on you to be reading out uh comments yes i'm looking at all the comments that are coming through on facebook and also on youtube so if you do have a comment if you have a question particularly please let us know uh, I've got the computer here, but I'm writing them all down with old fashioned pen, except the way I write it. Yeah? So, <laughs> just as go. I'm leaning over here to just get rid of some of this camera, it's this one, isn't it? Okay, um, let's get started then. So, um, let's jump straight in with the brush stroke florals number four, and that's this die set here, and how fantastic it is. So Obviously, with this being brush stroke number four, that means it's come in a series. So you guys at home, you might have all of the uh, versions of the brush strokes leading up to this one. This is another fantastic addition uh, to those, those floral sets here. So the interesting thing about this, and I learned this from watching Tim's video, is that these all start off as actual watercolor imagery and you can really tell because we've got all these kind of layered elements here it's really organic it, it's stylized and we've got these kind of missing apertures here that that just make it um you can tell that it's an organic kind of watercolor uh, theme that's been kind of cleverly turned into a die set by the very talented uh, Lisa Jones under the instruction of, of Tim. So it's it's just such a fantastic set. And let's just bring in some examples here of how we have used it. So here you can see, the thing I love about this die set is that you can create your own blend, uh, you know, using kind of mixed media techniques. If you've got some distress inks, some distress oxides, um, even acrylic paint, you can create your own blends here and then you can die cut this from those blends from anywhere in there. Uh, and then you can take those lighter and darker elements here and just layer them up uh, as you like. So we're going to get those kind of light and dark. You can choose to uh, use these parts as the shadow or different tones, or you can just have them layered up. I've seen versions of this that are kind of tone on tone. And these look fantastic as well because they are layered up like that. So here is a lovely card that we've created using this. And again, we've got those lovely uh, foliage elements on here that you can choose to manipulate. You can choose to add dimension to them. You can use the floor, the flower sculpting kit to, you know, give it a bit of a curl. They're just really cool die sets. I love the fact that you get this big, bold floral, which is going to take up a lot of room on on your card front or, or whichever making style you are working with that day um so we, we're taking up all that space but then you've got this smaller element so that kind of contrast is brilliant in a die set and there we go we've got another card here so this is using even more of those kind of mixed media techniques and just look at how it stands out against this lovely dark background there and in this case we've cho we've chosen to kind of layer up the floral elements and the foliage elements you know we've repeated them to just to just get more out of it so um you might notice these these uh the sentiment on this card and that lovely embossed element on the back there but we will be mentioning these further on in the live so there we go that is brushstroke florals number four now we next on our list we have so following on that kind of brushstroke theme, we have the brushstroke butterflies. Now this is the same sort of theme. These are stylized. We have all those shading elements there. So it's the, it's the same process 
as with the brushstroke florals, but we're using them on these lovely butterflies here. And I think a butterfly is a welcome addition to any make. Uh, these ones in particular, I'm, I'm so excited about this whole range. I'm so excited about, but things like this are just really cool. They're so Tim Holtz, they're so stylized. You can choose to uh, make them in mixed media style, or you can have them really clean and poppy uh, on the front of a nice clean card. So let's have a look at some of the makes that we've created here. Just look at that. So again, all you need to do is create your blend and then die cut these elements from the blends there. And it just looks so impressive. You know, all you've done is you've done some mixed media techniques, you've die cut it, and then you've got something that makes you look like an absolute pro in die cutting. Here, we've used it with some metallics. Now, this is just to show that versatility. But how cool is that? absolutely fantastic and just the kind of the layered effect of this this is what's making it stand out this is what's giving it that kind of the subtle kind of steps on there we've got all all that that layered effect is just really really cool and i love this stamp as well now here it is again you again we're, we're bringing in some of those lovely sentiments there uh, that we're going to be talking about a bit further on but we've just, I just love the way that these work when we're cutting them from metallic opulence. And there we go. Have a look at that. Look at the tiny, this is the smaller butterfly there, but just on its own, look how cool it is. How simple is this? But I tell you what, this is actually, you know, one of my favorite cards ever. It's that kind of simplicity. It's just the, the tiny bit of mark making there and this die set being the star of the show it's absolutely wonderful so there we are that one is brushstroke butterflies i think that's so clever the way that we've applied the same thing the same the same uh theme oh i've not even shown this absolutely fantastic that the same theme to a butterfly rather than a floral look at that that's so cool so next on our list are the it, so this this die here is called bold text number two. Now you may have already seen bold text number one. It's the same sort of theme. It's it's just these really cool. Well, it's exactly what it says on the tin, isn't it? It's bold text. But the fact that we've got those big letters along with the different size letters. We've got that lovely mix of different sizes of letters. We've got all these fantastic sentiments. We've got, you got this, lucky is a state of mind. So they're all really positive, you know, just exactly what we need right now. And what I would mention about this set is Tim has sets planned for festive season and um, for Halloween as well. So this is just, you know, you should get in from the ground up with these because we, you know, you're going to have the whole arsenal of this bold sentiment set ready to go uh, with loads and loads and loads of different sentiments. Now, one great thing about this is that you've got obviously these lovely apertures, but then you've also got the die set pieces alongside it here. So these die cut pieces, uh, here is here they are using the actual sentiments that come as part of the set but remember you can use the letters as they come as well so we've got loads of examples of using these now if i just start by trying to find that one where we've used the letters in a different way do you know what i'll go through the makes i've actually found it i'm going to save it a little bit further on so there we go again we've got that running theme of, of that kind of mixed media style where you can create a mixed media background. This one here, I believe, is uh, acrylic paint. And then just die cut it. We've got a stamp over the top there, and we can just see that kind of mixed media-ness coming through. And the dimension behind there is fantastic as well, because once you layer this up and you, you let the light do what it's going to do and play over this, it creates the dimension in there. So we've got the shadow that we're working with as well. Same idea there. Have a look at this one. Look how impactful that is. 
those lovely dark colours. And then Lucky is a state of mind, just over the top. And there we are. To the moon and back. Everybody knows that I love a moon. Look at the way that this one's been offset. So over the edge of the cardstock, and it still really works. So cool. And, and this is kind of tied in with one of our brush stroke floral makes there. Here's a mix of the aperture and the die cut letters there. Absolutely brilliant. And then here is one of the sentiments that we created ourselves. So if I just angle that round, I hope you can see that. It says only you, and it's a mix of big and small letters, but with a lovely kind of playful angular feel. You know, we've angled the letters uh, on different kind of trajectories, if that's the right word. It's probably not, I'm probably not using that right. Uh, but they're angled differently and it adds playfulness to the make. And then we've got this lovely heart here. And then what about this? This lovely industrial style make here that says make today count. And I believe that we've used either thick cardstock here or is this, the, is this thick cardstock, Pete, or is this map board? Uh, that is actually probably, well, no, that's thick cardstock. I would say that's, um, yeah, just the 300 gram cardstock. Fantastic. And it looks metallic. It's cool. And there we are. So that one is bold text number two. Now, we're going to jump over to Pete now because I want to know whether people are engaging. They, they are indeed, they are indeed, Jess. Yes, we've got, we've got it, and it sounds a bit very multicultural. We've got Jay from Twitter, by some of them, and I'm going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it, but it sounds very, uh, yeah, it sounds like it's from somewhere nice and warm. That's what's yeah. So, so, yeah, and we've got Lou. We've got Lou here from just over the border in Shropshire. Thank you for joining us, everybody, today. Uh, as I say, if you have any questions, any queries, the fact that we haven't had any questions as such yet means that Josh is doing a good job. He's answering all your questions <laughs> in the presentation. Way. Fabulous. So yeah, I, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna steal your thunder, my friend. You can just crank on. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Well, we'll crack on. Well, do you know what? This is a perfect opportunity for me to jump back in because this die set, I am absolutely enamoured by this yeah, die set now that is that is a word so this die set here this is abstract faces so let's switch back over to this overhead cam now what so watching tim's video when he was talking about this and i know why he said this was that kind of look at this die with an open mind and that's not to say that it's going to be a challenge to use at all what it is is a blank canvas to do something absolutely fantastically creative with now obviously on here we've got those lovely kind of picasso-esque sort of faces there uh, that's just one way to use the die Do you know what? i'd love to know the process of how they picked the actual imagery on the front of this die set with because there's so many different things that you can make with it that it would be hard to choose something but we've, we've got the packaging images here. Obviously, we've got these faces. We've got this lovely heart here. But we've just got these really stylistic shapes. We've got the squiggles there. Now, this die set was actually inspired by another one of my favorite die sets. So th this is one of Tim's past dies, which was Media Marks. And was there another die set that... Scribbles and splats. Scribbles and splats. And you can see the scribbles in here. And there's even something that looks like a splat there. But it's just these shapes, believe it or not, a squiggle like this, a, an aesthetically pleasing squiggle is a hard thing to create by hand. But we've got these uh, ready and die cut for you to use. Now, I'm, I'm so looking forward to showing you all the makes uh, we've made with this because we've had so much fun creating with it. Um, so have a look at, this is our embellished imagery here. And you can just see, this is the size of these dies here. So we've got that lovely heart. Now, for one thing, a heart on its own is worth buying in a die set, but we've also got these lovely kind of 
uh, hand-drawn scribbles. We've got these lovely rounded shapes here. These could be used as hair like they have in here. Here we've got a semicircle that's been used as a, as a fringe. But it's not just faces we can make. I am absolutely looking forward to creating a scene with this because I can see a little sunshine there, maybe the light coming from the sun. I can see squiggles for clouds. Uh, we could do inking with this. Do you know what? I'm not going to carry on talking. I'm just going to let the makes speak for themselves because we have, uh, and, and you'll notice that we're using that bold text number two there. Here is one that we've used that's similar to the packaging imagery, but we've got that lovely mixed media style that we've cut that heart from. And then look how cool that is. Just some light inking around there, leaving some of it white. It's just, it's so dynamic. Again, we've got another face here, but you'll notice here that each of the faces that we use uh, or that we create, sorry, is slightly different. You know, we might have put the eye in a different place. We might have used that the uh, freckle or we might not have used it we might use the squiggles the different squiggles we've layered them up here you can have so much fun with this set but look at these now again we've got the 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 face element here but this is all kind of almost monochrome here we've got we've used the luster wax with these to create some really fantastic effects but we've still got those squiggles in there so i mean is it squiggle? Do you say squiggle or, stri or scribble? Scribble, scribble or scribble, squiggle? Scribble. I think I think I'm still in primary school teacher mode. Squiggle for people watching at home just means scribble to me. So have a look at that. And then we've got that lovely industrial backdrop there and that fantastic stamp just to set it off. Here we've layered it up there with some dimensional tape. Uh, just to create some dimension and layer it all up. It's really cool. And I can see here that we've used, I believe, that is oxide over luster wax. Uh, yeah, and then dry brushed. And then dry brush. So again, just another technique that you can apply to these fantastic die sets. Here we go. Again, there's another fantastic face. And here we've got that almost kind of patina effect there which is absolutely brilliant and we've used this stamp here with a, a wax resist now i'm going to move on to some more um makes that we've created with this but and you know I, i'm not going to take credit for these because these are the master pete hughes in action uh, and he is cheering even <laughs> i don't think you can see him because we're on top down camera but he is cheering that i've mentioned this because look at the difference so pete was telling me that as he was working these he was seeing different kind of artist styles here so forgive me if i'm if i pronounce one of the artists name wrong as i did earlier i did try and google it and i and i came up with a footballer um well that, that's another story so we've got henry matisse here so you might notice that style and in the comments maybe comment uh, with what you would do with this die set maybe whose work you would try to replicate because have a look at this this is a picasso style image there and you know what how incredible is that so what was that say but is it a quote from picasso uh if i don't have red i use blue so absolutely fantastic then of course we have andy warhol and I, I just know that everyone at home is watching with open mouths here. Absolutely incredible. So we've got that famous kind of imagery there, the, the Andy Warhol imagery. Then, do you want to say this one, Pete? Frida? Frida Kahlo. Kahlo, okay. Uh, I'm not as cultured as one might think. And so some of these artists' names <laughs> are going straight over my head, but I will do my research after this. But how cool is that? It's incredible. So this die set just enables you to create all of these different styles. So you can capture different artist styles within these die sets, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. You will recognize this from Vermeer. Absolutely fantastic. And this has all been done uh, just using that die set with some clever techniques. We have crazy for you. Is that Madonna? Madonna, absolutely brilliant. Just look at that. I'm going to bring that even closer. How cool 
is that. And do you know what? I can tell you now, there are going to be blogs probably in the future. I mean, I'm not I'm not giving you extra work here, I hope, Pete, but you probably will be make, doing some kind of blogs on how to create cards like this and how to use this die. And then I had to go myself and I, because, you know, I saw this and I saw a nice sad clown there and that just says life's a circus but this is just to show uh you know even just having a go like i was early you can come up with your own compositions you can create faces my next project with this die set is going to be in creating a scene so watch out for that and that there is abstract faces there we are so next on our list we have modern floristry so that is this die set here now you know according to so watching tim's video we get kind of requests for die sets like this but um for bigger bolder ones like this so obviously you know tim listens we we've created here these lovely kind of um big bold florals that are ideal for inking for using mixed media techniques and tim is just a genius in the way that he creates these because we've got all of those uh, big florals we've got these small florals again you've got layered elements that you can come up with here we've got the foliage here and i, I do love uh, kind of different styles of foliage because it's it's much easier to create a really nice bouquet um you know a floral concept when you've got different sizes and different styles of floral in there now what i love about this set one is the bold nature of it two is the size of it so let's bring on the imagery here so these are nice big florals so they they are really impactful on the front of a, a card um but we can choose to use the smaller ones if we're being subtle as well. Again, the running theme behind this is, is we've got that kind of the ability to create a mixed media background and then just die cut from it. And you've got something really stunning and beautiful. Now, with this die set, we're also getting these aperture dies here. So you can cut into um, into a, a card front here or any any cardstock and the great thing about this is that you can use these in other die sets in this collection and indeed you know you'll be able to find ways to use them in any uh not any but you know a lot of of tim's dies so any that you've got we can try using these sorts of aperture dies here now for instance and i will kind of go back to these i'll just bring this on very quickly i know that with these uh, the birds, which we're going to be talking about uh, a bit later, you can use this to cut from, create an aperture so you can create some um, lovely kind of detail on the front of those birds there. But let's have a look at some of the makes that we've created. So here we have a lovely clean make here. And I just love this. This is, you know, this is just using one of those elements of this die set. So we've done a pattern repeat here, clean, no inking on this, lovely bright poppy colors. This is a perfect summer card there. Again, same sort of idea there, absolutely brilliant. And this is just using, um, I believe this is using the same die. Am I right? No, 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 I'm not, yeah, sorry. Um, this is a different die, but it's a bigger one here. So it's just absolutely stunning that then we're using kind of some more muted tones here. These are a lot of these are made using our muted cardstock range, which these die took to perfectly with. And um, but again, we're just doing that kind of pattern repeat. And here we brought on some smaller of those florals. So already you can see how using one of the bigger florals with one of the smaller ones is going to create that kind of contrast in your composition and you know create liveliness. Really cool. Then we've got this one here same sort of theme absolutely brilliant but then we've got some slightly different themes here um some smaller kind of simpler cards here here we are using tone on tone but with um a lovely kind of ink blend underneath 
And that added dimension, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can let the light play over these how it wants to, and you can create a lovely floral composition. And look at that. There we go, with some really subtle mixed media splattering on there. I love that. There we are, have a look at that. And this is, you know, we've only used sort of two of the actual petal elements here um, alongside these other kind of bigger, bolder elements. And, and just this little detail here just shows what you can create with this. And then on a slightly darker background there, these are really cool concepts. And then that is not all because here, We've actually used them as stencils with acrylic to create some really cool Hessian bags. How about that? This is next level crafting. I love these. So these would be really cool for maybe a birthday coming up or just, you know, a way of giving a really lovely um, present to someone in a nice presentable way. So. Brilliant. This one here was, ooh, I've tipped out some kind of powder onto the, the table there, but don't worry about that. That was modern floristry. So next we have, ooh, artsy stems. So let's bring on the package in here. So this one here is artsy stems. So after I've talked about artsy stems, we're going to go back to the comments. So make sure if you have any questions about anything, there are no silly questions or just some nice comments or, you know, anything at all. Just write it in the comments section because we do have Pete on hand. I can see him jotting a few things down um, to maybe call, call your name out and answer your question. So here we go. We've got artsy stems here. Now, I really, really love this. Um, and Pete, you mentioned before that this was kind of another addition to a, a different die set. Yeah, it's kind of a modern take on Tim's hugely popular wildflower stems, but this is the Ooh. most kind of modern version. Yeah, I love those wildflower stems. They're so cool to work with. But these, do you know what? With this die set, I can see... I can see a really kind of cheerful floral there, you know, with all these lovely curly bits coming up. But I can also see a kind of maybe even Halloween makes where these are almost kind of Burton-esque um, curls coming off there. It might look, I imagine that flower. And, and I feel silly saying this after mentioning how much I like moons, but imagine a big moon, this flower in front of it, just one floral and just how it curls around there. So that's that's a nice idea. Um, but here we have these different kind of flower heads here and they're all really stylized. They're all really cool as well. Uh, they're not really like anything that I've seen before. Um, you know, the, these are just, they're something that you don't already own. Really, I really love these flower heads and they're kind of, they're almost folky. Um, you can see that they're kind of, they've got an illustrative feel to them. But the stems is what I want to talk about here because very, very cleverly, and I never would have thought of doing this, typical Tim Holtz has, has, has given you an extra use for the stems here because these stems being straight can be used as floral borders as well. So let's have a look at the actual die set here. They're, they're obviously bigger than they are in the packaging. They're a really lovely size here. Um, so. I noticed it in Tim's video, he was talking about getting questions about creating larger florals or straighter florals for tall cards. And these are absolutely perfect for that. But yeah, we've got these stems that can be used as borders. And when we talk again, I'm going to bring in that bird dye that we are going to mention. I shouldn't call it the bird dye. This is silhouette birds here, but we will be talking about that a bit later on because it's so cool. But can you imagine one of these bird silhouettes stood? on one of these lovely, ooh, lovely straight stems there. They're so cool. And you can just see already how all these die sets are starting. They are cohesive. You know, with this whole range, you can use each of them with each of them. And, it, and it's been made really easy for you. I just absolutely love them. So let's have a look at how we have used these artsy stems. So, here, really simple. And do you know what? 
I love a simple make, but only simple when it's done well like this. So have a look at that smile we've used. It's, it's kind of monotone. We've got these greys here that I believe are from our uh, neutral collection. Um, so the, the actual die cut pieces from that bold text number two there, and that's all it took there. Do you know, it's brave to create a make like this where it's so simple, but it's just spot on. It's really impactful. And that's made possible by these fantastic florals that come uh, in this tie set here. So you've got, you know, different flower heads that work really well together. They're all the same style, but they're very different at the same time. And then these stems in the background, so cool. Have a look at this. Now here, We've almost got, it's like an enamel finish on the front. And this is done with metallic embossing powder here. And then we've set it with the heat tool. But look at that. That then, if I just move that around in the light and capture it, you can just see how kind of amazing this is with, you know, that lovely stylized floral piece there. You know, some people might see this and you go, you know, it's a flower, but it doesn't look exactly like a flower i just think they're so cool in the way he's done that i just want i want to cut the top off there and have that as a lollipop somewhere as well uh, but that's just me and here we are with another technique here again we've used some dry brushing technique it looks like oxide on the front and we've got that metallic shine as well but that intricate stamping on there is just making this into a perfect mixed media piece there absolutely brilliant here a lovely bold poppy card here again we're bringing in those sentiment sets you're going to use those sentiment sets time and time and time and time again that's why they keep cropping up on all of our makes here and just look at this one and notice this lovely embossing folder in the back that we will be mentioning later on but how cool is that this has even got stitching around the outside there and these florals just lend themselves to it perfectly absolutely fantastic so that is artsy florals um and again we are going well sorry sorry artsy stems artsy stems, artsy stems not artsy florals artsy stems and we're moving over to pete yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. for the comments thank you uh, thank you a couple of things jim purple asked about the industrial look with the um the faces uh yeah i always start with black cut i always start with black cut because i can add acrylics to that i can add uh, or oh, sometimes grey, so not always have that. You can add acrylics, you can add oxides that you can add your lovely mustard waxes, whatever you want. But yeah, I usually start with black cat. Uh, a good heavyweight as well, especially if you're layering like that. Um, there's another question now. Uh, Jane Walsley asked about the dictionary stamps. They, they are, they are, they're out there now. They've been released. So yeah, look out for those. I hope they'll be very popular. Now, I'm, I'm just going to uh, jump in uh, for a sec, John. Because what I want to mention, if you love these dies, um, I will be on Creating Crack on Sunday the 10th and Monday the 11th. So Sunday the first show is 6, then we've got 9, so it's 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and then on Monday I'm on at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And we'll be having all of these dies on the show, as well as Tim's black switch machine. So if you've not seen that in action, it's a good opportunity to do so. And I've just made some cards now. I know we were talking about the bolt text number two and the gorgeous floors. Well, we bundle those with the machine just for the show. So it's going to be a good opportunity. And what we've got here is each of the sentiments with some of the florals. And we're combining it with our lovely Sizzix cardstock. This is our core cardstock range. They're really simple, just creating background patterns. Lots and lots of fun to the moon and back there. Then we have love with all your heart. Make today cat. They're just flashing past. If you want to see them in more depth, then of course tune into Creative Craft on Sunday and Monday. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Good opportunity to look at all these guys in a bit more depth and see some of the cool techniques which Josh and I have used to create some of these projects. Um, yeah. So oh, um, no. No, I think that, think that was it. That was it. Back to you, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. And, and it's probably a good time to mention, which I didn't mention earlier, is that that bold text number two can be used with 
our shaker panes, can't it? You can use it as shaker panes, and the, the size of them, because they're all the same width, they work with Tim's large, you know his favorite large tag size? Oh, yeah. They're all made to work with that tag, so um, oh, you can use them wherever. That's the beauty of them, they're so versatile, so flexible. You can integrate a stencil, you get, oh, it's, you could go on and on just talking about that set by itself. And I'm from the world, so that's why I'm <laughs> My good friend Josh. Oh, some somebody came up and said we make a good team. Wow, that, that that's a lovely comment. Keep those sorts of comments coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, back to the overview. So, and we land on this has to be one of my favourite die sets of this collection. I don't like to pick favourites, especially when it comes to Tim Holtz because they're also fantastic. But. Uh, obviously, as a lover of nature, um, I really love these birds here. So these are the silhouette birds. And what, what you'll notice about them instantly is that they almost have a kind of angular feel. But what we were saying before, before this overview, before the live uh, went out, I was talking to Pete about them. And what I was saying is that I can I can tell by looking at these birds you know what they were about to do they're just doing how do i describe it well they're just doing birdie things aren't they like this one here is looking for either worms or pecking seeds off the ground uh this one here is stood on a branch they, they just look really kind of realistic they're in realistic bird poses so you can tell that they've been taken from uh, natural imagery they're so cool these the angular nature of them, and I'm going to bring on my uh, embellished image here. The angular nature of them, one, it makes them really stylized. So, you know, it, they look cool. There's, there's no better way of describing these than they just look really cool. No matter what you do to them, you can see here that I've used, uh, we've used stamps on them. We've got that kind of mixed media background again. We've used some blending, some spraying. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't matter too much what you're doing to them because once you cut them, you've got these fantastic um, bird silhouettes here. These outlines they almost look like they've been kind of uh, painted using a palette knife, which is a really cool effect that I'm really into at the moment. It's kind of painting with palette knives, but you can get that effect just by by die cutting these dies here. And I can just imagine so many different sentiments that we could create with this. But let's go ahead and look at some of the cards that we've created with them. So have a look. Look at the size of it. For one, just the size of this, it creates a really, you know, it takes up the perfect amount of room on your card. Just a sentiment here, some lovely wreaths in the background and these lovely effects. Uh, and stamping, of course, over here, these lovely mixed media effects there. So this bird silhouette just kind of propped up on a little bit of uh, some of our foam tape just makes the card. You know, this card would be fantastic even without all that going on in the background. But when added, it just blows you away. Again, have a look at that. So this is just made with some stencil film, some inking, and that bird is incredible so if you just use the same one i believe in both of these how about this so we can make them uh festive like we have here uh, just using some ink in you could use these for halloween you could use these uh, really they are evergreen so you'll be able to use these all year round because i can think of loads of different occasions that these would be perfect for um and have a look at this so this is the very clever Pete Hughes who has used some masking um, to make magpies out of the bird. So it doesn't really matter exactly which bird that you're uh, making with at the time. You can make it into the right type of bird that you want just by using some um, inking techniques. And here, I believe, just by looking at this card, I can see that you've actually switched this one round, haven't you? So you've got that option as well so you can have it facing this way or this way just the fact that they are silhouettes makes it so you can have them on either side so they're they're really really cool and they are the silhouette birds now i'm going to move on to our embossing folders here now these 
are, in a word, impressive. Do you know what? I can't pick just one word for these. They're impressive. They're spectacular. They're incredible. Uh, props to Ryan, who's one of our very talented uh, 3D designers, who's who's worked really hard. You know, um, under Tim's instruction, has 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 worked hard to create uh, sort of Tim's vision there. And this is so cool. The packaging on these, you know, I shouldn't even linger on the packaging because it doesn't do it justice. Have a look at this. So I, I'm going to bring on this image here now the detail in this is incredible by the way i haven't even said the name of it yet this is cracked leather but you probably could have guessed that just by looking at it because it really looks like cracked leather you know if someone gave me a wallet that was made out of this with texture roll i wouldn't question the fact that it was actual cracked leather there it, it looks so cool we've got all it looks Almost, if you if you couldn't feel it there and feel that that is tactile and, and really detailed, it looks like a photograph, maybe an up close photograph of like elephant hide or something like that. It's it's just so organic, so cool. It looks natural. Um, I'm really impressed by this die set here. And have a look at that. So this is using some dry brush technique here. I believe this is dry brushing as well with some acrylic paint here. Now dry brushing on um, on a 3D textured embossing folder is such a pleasant thing to do. And we've got loads of blogs, uh, some vlogs on the Sizzix website that will show people exactly how you do this because it looks like it's going to be a difficult technique to achieve, but it's actually a really pleasant one to do. You just take your time, you brush over the same area, you have patience and you can create some really incredible effects there now have a look when used with some of our luster wax here so i can see gold i can see silver luster wax and maybe even i can't tell if that's inked or maybe even some of our rose gold around the side there but if i move this around i'm going to bring it closer to the camera there i wonder if that it looks like it's zooming in not zooming in sorry clearing but have a look at that the way it catches the light there it's just so impressive this i could go on and on and on about this but have a look at it it's just so impressive and here is a card make that we've used obviously we've used some of those brush stroke florals we've got the bold text in there and this fantastic embossing folder in the back just absolutely makes it so that's brilliant that one is cracked leather and running along the same theme here we have burlap now, I don't need to tell you why this is called burlap, because, it again, it looks real. Um, it, the detail in these, I think we've really stepped it up a notch. You know, I mean, going on the comparison between Tim's fantastic embossing folders from chapter one, when we had things like Damask, these ones, we've really taken it in and focused on that fine detail and the ability to make these look real. Is astonishing so have a look at that oh do you know what someone is holding up a sign that says it's not burlap it is woven i don't know where i got burlap from i'm sure i read that earlier or yesterday it, well maybe that's why i was calling it burlap but this is woven so how fantastic is that and it does look woven as well and there we go here is a card make that we've done just using that lovely kind of rectangular element there of that woven embossing folder. Again, we've used some of those brushstroke florals and that bold text number two. And finally, this is just one of those kind of masterpieces here. You know, this is just something that would be lovely, like lent up in your garden shed somewhere or in your greenhouse. How cool is that with all those brushstroke florals? And finally, the woven embossing folder there. So that is actually it for me today. Um, I get, so yeah, we've gone through, we, we have gone through all of them, haven't we? We've gone through everything, yes, indeed we have. Yes. Fantastic, yes. yeah. Um, so 
Are there any questions? Not really. Uh, Jane was it asked uh, uh, the, the words uh, are they embossed, but it's already been answered. But yeah, I mean they can be embossed because there's lovely embossing folders. So that they what they do make. And what I love about Tim's is very often he leaves a lot of the work for you guys to do. He comes up with beautiful shapes, but they're like a blank canvas. You can emboss them. You can use all your techniques. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do, he trusts you, the maker. And you know what? They look just as great out of plain old cardstock. As they do when you've applied all your techniques and what have you to them. Mm -hmm. Great, great guys. Fantastic. So that is actually it from us. I hope uh, you have enjoyed the live. I hope you found it inspiring. I hope you've thought of some really cool things to do with all these dyes. Uh, as always, we love to know what you are going to do with the dyes. And we just generally love reading your comments. So make sure uh, you're giving us a comment. Um, and we, I guess, you know, we're, from me and Pete, we will see you next time. Yep. <laughs>